Okay, economic stuff. We're going to be looking at guns and butter, the American economy, Karl Marx, and then the law of supply. Okay, so production possibilities curve is when you've got two things that you can make. Let's say you've got a factory and you, you, in the factory you make wine and cotton. Okay, so when you put all your resources, all your best people, all your equipment on just making wine, there's a, there's a limit of how much you can make. That's the maximum amount of wine you, can wait, wine you can make and you make no cotton. Then let's say you retool the factory. Okay, guys, you're going to do this. And you see how much cotton you can produce. So you don't produce any wine, you just produce cotton. So you either produce total wine or total cotton. But a production possibilities curve is all the choices in between, some wine and some cotton. So you can see choice A, you're making a lot of wine, not quite as much cotton. Choice B, you're making less wine and more cotton. Choice C, you're making a lot of cotton and a little wine. So that's a production possibilities curve. Now, the, the most uh, uh, widely used one is guns and butter, because every society like the U.S., we, we've got civilian needs we have to supply, you know, toilet paper, uh, butter's got to be in the marketplace, gasoline for cars, but then military. We've got to put money into our military. So if you're like North Korea, you put all your money into the military, and then people starve by the millions in North Korea because they didn't put any money into helping uh, civilian needs like butter be produced. In the U.S., we have a lot of civilian needs, and a lot of liberals think we should pay very less for military. So uh, there, there's an opportunity cost involved here, though. Uh, if you choose to put everything in the military, your people starve. If you put everything into butter, then you're going to get attacked because you have no military and people are going to take you over. So you, you've got to make a choice as a society somewhere in between. So the opportunity cost is the thing you didn't choose. So, for instance, let's just look at the first one here. What's the opportunity cost of, of increasing gun production from 7 to 11 million? So you can see that middle blue dot is at about 7 million guns. Okay, if we want to increase the production up to 11 million guns, that's the next blue dot there, what's the opportunity cost? Well, it's what you didn't produce in butter. You produce 27 million less sticks of butter. Just look along the bottom there. 27 million. So that's your opportunity cost. It's the thing you didn't do. You got $10. You want to go to a movie, but you want to buy uh, some notebooks for school. So you buy the notebooks. The opportunity cost is you didn't go to the movie. It's So opportunity cost is what you didn't do because you made a choice to do, do the other thing. Here is from your book. Uh, this this uh, picture is taken from the book. So if to gain this amount of civilian goods at the bottom there, you can see that, that the blue arrow moves from Y to Z. If you want to make that much more butter, the cost is you'll no longer be able to produce, produce A amount of guns. You'll have to produce less down to B. That's your opportunity cost. That's the amount that you gave up to make more butter. Okay, let's look at, uh, okay, you know about the American economy. We studied some of this, but uh, the little chart in your book shows these are the key parts of the American economy. Uh, in, in theory, we're a pure capitalistic society, which means laissez-faire. The government is governs, the government is best, which governs least. That's what laissez-faire means. So no government control. We all make decisions in the marketplace about buying and selling. That's pure capitalism. Well, it doesn't really exist in America now. The, the government does have, uh, it, it has a minimum wage requirement. It makes certain demands on businesses that they have safety features and stuff. So, so we're not a pure capitalistic society, but we're close to it. You know, Adam Smith talked about the invisible hand. If, if the government doesn't get involved and people just buy and sell from each other the way they want to, I'm selfishly making a product to make money, you're selfishly buying it because you like it, all that selfishness, the invisible hand somehow makes it work out for the best for all of us. That's the idea. So uh, in a free enterprise system like our American economy, producers can produce what they want to. I can produce uh, suit coats if I want to. I can go into production for making ties or shirts or a computer mouse, you know. Uh, freedom of choice is you as a consumer, you can choose not to buy that mouse, not to buy this. You, you can choose to buy what you want to. So that, that, in, that, that interplay between producers and consumers is what makes our economy. The profit incentive is, you know, hey, uh, I, I can, you know, maybe spend $50 in materials and, and $25 in, in paying my labor and I put $75 in this so I can sell it for $100 and make $25 profit. That's why I'm doing it. And, uh, and so I, maybe I could sell it for $200, make $125 profit. Yeah, I'll do that. But now because of competition, somebody else makes this and he's not selling it for $200, he's selling it for $150. So I got to come down in price and then private property. So in your book, you can see these are the different characteristics of the American economy. We talked about those last week. All right. Karl Marx. There's a picture of this is taken from your book. Karl Marx. Look at the bottom there. It says capitalist versus proletariat. 
Marx actually called them the bourgeoisie, but your book doesn't use that term. So capitalist versus the all of history can be understood as this battle between capitalists, the people that own everything, the ones that have the money, they own all the factories and stuff, and us lowly proletariat, those of us that are just workers. And he said that struggle would, would lead to uh, problems in capitalism. And so step two would be because of this wide gap, because the producers have everything, the capitalists, that the, that the proletariat, us poor workers at the bottom, we're going to want to overthrow the capitalists. And so step three, we will be victorious. We will overthrow them. Then we'll take over the factories. We'll be in charge of things. And finally, Karl Marx said that there would be pure communism. We won't need a government or courts because... We're all going to work for each other. I'm a teacher, so I'll teach your kids for free. You're a shoemaker, so you'll fix my shoes. You like the nanny, so you'll babysit my kids. And we'll just all do that for each other because we love each other. And we'll just give of each other. Marx said, from every man according to his ability to every man according to his need. That's pure Marxism. It's never worked anywhere. But that's Marx's theory. Didn't work. Sorry, Carl. Okay, and the final thing we're looking at is supply. Okay, so... Uh, there's this picture from your book. So as price goes up, the quantity supplied goes up. Quantity supplied goes up. So let's say that uh, you know the price of sport coats is going up because people want you know want them and people are paying for them. Hey, let's start producing more sport co sport coats because that's where the money is. So so because the price goes up, okay, the quantity supplied goes up. And as part of that same idea, as the price goes down, oh, there's the demand starting to die. People don't want the, the coats as much. Okay, well, let, let, let's stop making it then. Let's get out of that business. Let's go back to making ties. So as the price goes down, the number supplied by producers goes down. That's the law of supply. So looking at this chart from your book, DVDs, okay, you know, uh, 900 million when they're at $18, are, are being made because people are going into DVD making because people are paying 18 bucks a DVD. Oh, but now they've got what they want. They're paying. Now I can only get $10 for my DVD. So there's only a hundred million supplied. In other words, the, the lower the price, the fewer, uh, because we can't make as much, we're, we're supplying fewer. Okay. So, uh, those are just some of the basic ideas. Oh, this, this puts, uh, that chart that we just saw, this puts it into a graphic form. So you can see that as uh, more DVDs are supplied, you know, uh, because people are paying for it, as the price goes up, we produce more because because producers go to where the money is. So they, they produce more. Then as, as, you know, demand dies down, that goes down. Okay, so uh, some of these ideas are going to be on your test tomorrow.